Hello everybody. Today we'll be looking at the number root 2 and how to approximate it. Now we know that root 2 is irrational. It cannot be written as a fraction. But I want to show you a technique on how to approximate it with a fraction. There's two reasons I want to do this. One, approximating irrational numbers is a problem of real importance. Anything that needs to be built or measured in the real world that involves irrationals, you're going to need a fairly decent rational approximation. And the other reason I want to do this is because lots of students see the square root button on their calculator as a sort of black box. Um, you know, you just type the number in, hit, hit equals, and uh, you get a number out. And it's a bit mysterious how the calculator does this. So I'm going to show you how, how a calculator might do it. So the first step actually to, to calculating the square root of 2 or approximating the square root of 2 is, um, is to let it do the work for it for us. Um, so we're going to use a related number, 1 plus the square root of 2, and we'll keep squaring it to get higher and higher powers. And then hopefully we will spot a pretty interesting phenomenon. I suggest right now that you go get something to write on yourself and do this along with me by hand because I will not be writing out all of the steps and you should also be keeping a record of the answers. So, let's begin. The first power, 1 plus the square root of 2, all squared. If you expand it out, you will get 3 plus 2 root 2. Now, we're going to take this number and I'm going to square it. So then the square of 3 plus 2 root 2 is 17 plus 12 root 2. Now I'm going to square this one last time. If you're doing this by hand, it's going to take a little bit longer. And I think you should get 577 plus 408 root 2. We'll stop there, although we could continue this process on arbitrarily long. Now something is happening quite interesting in the coefficients of each of these, uh, each of these steps. So the very first coefficients, well, we just had 1 and 1 lot of root 2. So we're going to look at the ratio of these things. We're going to do 1 divided by 1. Now, this shouldn't be too taxing for you. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Nothing really interesting here. But let's look at the next step. We have 3 plus 2 root 2. Well, let's see what happens when we do 3 divided by 2. And then we'll square it. You get 9 over 4. Now, 9 over 4 is 2.25, which is relatively close to 2. Now, let's do the next one, 17 over 2. If we square this, we get a number that becomes very, very close to 2. And if we take our very last coefficients, 577 and 408, if we find the ratio of those and then square it, you'll see how unbelievably close it is to 2. It's 1 in, uh, in you know, 160 thousandth um, of, a, uh, of a part within 2. So this is a fantastically good approximation for the square root of 2 which and I think this is this is done pr pretty cheaply you know we didn't do that much work and we've managed to work out a very very good approximation so I'm not going to explain why this trick works uh, but I'm going to point you in the direction of an answer so I suggest you have a look at the general form of what happens when you expand out um, you know something plus a multiple of a square root and then have a look at the coefficients of the, the sort of um, rational part and the irrational part and that should point you in the right direction if you want a little bit more practice and you want to try this technique out for yourself I suggest you start on the next simple irrational number which is the square root of 3 so you would start at 1 plus the square root of 3 now this technique can be used for any any square root of a positive real and it will work for root 5 but you'll find that the approximation is probably not as good after as many steps as it was for root 2 or root 3 maybe 1 plus the square root of 5 is not the best place to start if you can work out a better number to start on then I think you'll understand this technique quite well. So if you can try and find a better place to start than 1 plus root 5, of course there's still got to be a root 5 in it, but maybe we're not going to add 1 to it. 
then I think you'll come to a better understanding of how this technique works. Thank you for watching. Uh, please comment, of course. Please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next mathematical jewel. Thank you very much.